Carl E. Walter, Red Capitalism, The Fragile Financial Foundation of China's Extraordinary Rise. Dive into the complex world of China's financial foundations with this summary of Red Capitalism, The Fragile Financial Foundation of China's Extraordinary Rise, by Carl E. Walter. Explore the intricate financial structures and relationships that enabled China to rise from bankruptcy in the late 1970s to economic powerhouse today. Discover how China's Communist Party transitioned from Maoist ideologies to embracing capitalism and the challenges they faced during their rapid transformation. You'll learn the roles and impacts of state-owned enterprises, banking regulations, and Chinese crony capitalism in shaping their unique economic landscape. China's Economic Transformation China's journey towards economic success is not without mistakes. The transformation began when Deng Xiaoping acceded to power in 1978. The nation deregulated its markets and founded stock exchanges in Shanghai and Shenzhen. After the Asian financial crisis of 1997, China restructured and recapitalized its bankrupt state banks. The banks listed some of their shares on global exchanges, allowing them to raise new money and attract international partners. Eventually, China relaxed its controls and allowed more local governments to set up their own special economic zones. Understanding how China built its own version of capitalism is fundamental to understanding the role China will play in the global economy in the next few years. China's Complex Economy The Chinese economy is a complicated fusion of personal and political relationships. Despite a facade of independence, state-owned enterprises, SOEs, are tied to the political system. These corporations are superficially internationalized, but still under state control. In contrast, foreign direct investment operates in a private, non-state sector that has produced a growing entrepreneurial class. Although China's Communist Party holds a seemingly monolithic power structure, it is essentially fragmented. Regional and local governments have significant sway, and special interests contribute to crony capitalism. Leading party members follow a patronage system and pursue their economic interests to maintain political stability. While China has made economic reforms that have allowed SOEs to thrive, its banks and overall economy still have weaknesses. China's State-Controlled Banking China's banking system heavily relies on its state-owned banks, primarily the Bank of China, China Construction Bank, Agricultural Bank of China, and Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, that hold 43% of the nation's financial assets. Foreign banks account for less than 2% of banking assets. Lending decisions are made by untrained party loyalists in the employ of state-controlled banks. Though borrowers, including state-controlled companies and other government interests, are under no obligation to repay their loans, the state comes to the rescue of these undisciplined lenders repeatedly. China's Ongoing Debt Crisis China's financial crisis of the late 1990s prompted the country's financial authorities to revamp its banks through capital injections and transfers of non-performing loans to asset management companies. The restructuring efforts were successful, and major banks have since raised large capital in international markets. However, despite this success, some concerning items remain unaddressed, specifically the IOUs issued by the Ministry of Finance persisting on bank balance sheets, some dating back to the early 1990s. These IOUs are outstanding, and it is unlikely that the government will extinguish them, given their grip on the banks. This complicated issue confounds Western accounting analysis, leaving it standing on who approved the debt, and how to collect it, unclear. Moreover, the People's Bank of China, PBOC, acting as a central bank, is guaranteeing China's asset management companies, but lacks regulations prompt doubts about adequate loan valuations, credit issuance, and risk controls. This is further complicated by the box efforts to stimulate China's economy through lending in the wake of the 2008 global recession, which led to another wave of future non-performing assets. The Paradox of China's Banking System China's banking system remains opaque and politically driven, with little competition and government-controlled interest rates. Bad debt is recycled to new entities, 
and banks depend on the government for profit. As a result, Chinese banks have not proven they can create value without government protection, and are not internationally competitive. Despite this, China's capital markets boast the world's largest IPOs, demonstrating a paradoxical economic system. No Chinese banks made offers for distressed U.S. financial institutions in 2008, and other nations have not adopted their banking model. Understanding China's Bond Market China's bond market is a developing economy due to the control the party has on interest rates. Therefore, bank loan rates determine bond prices and risk assessments, not market demand. This results in a system that is illiquid and lacks an objective way to measure and price risk. The bond primary dealers are banks, and they hold the bonds they buy in their own portfolios until maturity, making it similar to loans, hence it is a way of making loans rather than raising capital. The MOF reported that the majority of China's thousands of local municipalities run fiscal deficits, and mayors and provincial governors must finance local job-creating projects. As a result, cities and regions have created a municipal bond market by issuing bonds and commercial paper through limited liability companies. By 2009, provincial and local governments had created 8,221 fundraising platforms, totaling $95 billion in new debt, with the total cumulative municipal debt reaching $1.14 trillion, equivalent to 23% of China's yearly gross domestic product. Therefore, China's bond market is a complex mechanism that requires investors to understand its structure and how it differs from other global bond markets. China's Stock Market and Economic Challenges China's party officials promote stock ownership as a symbol of wealth and modernity for the nation. However, the state runs the stock exchanges and government policy changes heavily affect the market. The IPO process drives stock market activity, creating quick profit opportunities but hindering deeper analysis of a company's performance. China's economy is also facing serious challenges as its population ages and pensions become a massive liability. These challenges are worsened by the poorly structured capital markets, making it difficult for China to replace the U.S. as the center of the global economy. In conclusion, Red Capitalism provides a deep look into the intricate financial structures that have sustained China's extraordinary rise. Despite recent economic growth, the country remains fragile and faces potential issues, such as demographic changes, pensions, and widening income inequality. China's journey has not been linear and its leadership has been fundamentally focused on maintaining political power. Lending policies, complex personal and political relationships, governance challenges, and banking opacity all contribute to the nation's current state. Ultimately, future stability will depend on Chinese authorities' ability to reform the existing system, address inherent financial challenges, and navigate the growing complexities of the global economy.